So here we go into Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon number 6. And this book has only been out for a few weeks and already has been the source of a lot of controversy. So I'm going to explain a lot of the bigger points that everybody's been blogging about. But before we begin, I'd like to point out that just as with older books, when you get one of these, you're actually getting more than what you pay for. In this instance, if you buy this book, you're getting a book in three quarters. And that's saying something because original book number eight was more than exceptionally thick. This is actually the biggest of the graphic novels in the original Sailor Moon set. So if you buy number six, you are getting a book and a half, which is quite a bit thicker. And that's a really good value in this economy. So first, let's just look at a few of the aesthetic differences. Here, as you can see, we have the Japanese second edition of the printing of the book versus the American version. And just as with earlier titles, we have our ourselves a little spoiler because Chibiosa is not going to have this costume for quite a while. And as you can see, her coloring is a little darker on the American edition of the books. Whereas the Japanese version, her skin is much more pale. Not exactly sure why, but I'm definitely not complaining because this is a beautiful book in person. The spines, yes, you already saw your first jump cut. Spines are really similar. This time we they decided to keep the colors really close, except for when they put in the author's name. The back of the book is just slightly different. It's probably not even going to show up in the camera. Uh, this is the Japanese version, and this is the English version. And as you can see, it's a slight color change, but not by very much. And also, t pay attention here, this is definitely a skin color change. It's not like the entire cover was printed on different paper or anything. This is definitely somebody going in and darkening the skin. Very interesting note there. And of course, we have our 13 and up warning. And it's very much needed in this book. This book is, um, well, not the most gruesome. You know, it's, it's not like the Dark Moon arc, but it deals with a lot of content you definitely don't want your little brother and sister getting a hold of. As usual, the Japanese and the English editions give us a lot of full-color pages. Uh, this is the Japanese version of page one, and as you can see, the colors are kind of pale. The English version is also a little bit pale, but you can still see Chibiosa's skin tone. And a few other details have been left in as well. Again, it seems like they're going all out with an HD print of each book, but that's an opinion. You can make up your own mind when you get the books. Now, in both editions, we open up with another spoiler. If you look closely, the outer Sailor Senshi and the inner Sailor Senshi are all wearing their super uniforms. They're not going to get that for a little while yet. And even Chibiosa is in Super Sailor Chibi Moon form. And her mother is in her super attire as well. So the only one here not in super mode is Saturn. And her existence on this page is also a spoiler. We're not supposed to learn that she's Sailor Saturn for one more book yet. While the next two pages are more Sailor Moon R oriented. Hence the yellow locket. The difference in the tiara. This would have been like a little bit better for book number five, considering that Diana is in the picture. And then this is the one that got me. If you've noticed, a lot of the newer books have little pictures here and there that were done initially in 2003 and 2004 for the website, sort of when they were starting to think about redoing the series. Oops, spoiler there. This one, it looks like Chibiosa's hair is almost lavender. The English print has the pictures completely restored. All of the colors are back. So this is actually how you'd find them in the art book. You probably can't tell in the camera, but the skin is a little darker on all of the characters. And the details are a little clearer. Again, same art as the Japanese book. 
And interesting to note that Diana initially has blue eyes, which she picks up from her mother. She and her mother are supposed to have the same eyes, so whenever you see one with red or brown eyes, the other has them too. And here's something interesting. You know how I said blue hair or purple hair or lavender hair in the other one? Well, you can't really see it in the camera. It's a striking bluish lavender here. It's almost like I'm looking at Keenan Dimian's hair. I also want to point out the first page for the actual manga is once again on shiny paper. This was something that had stopped for the last two books, and Kodansha started it again. I'm not sure why, but it's a nice little printing error. And if that's a printing error, then that's okay. If you have the original Tokyo Pop books, you're usually greeted with this little side panel that pretty much is made for readers that are just catching up to the series. You know, pretty much telling you uh, who the heroes and villains are, who are these people, how are they related, that sort of thing. You don't see these in the Japanese reprint or in the uh, United States reprint. I just wanted to point that out. Now, in the last review that I did, which was for the Sailor Moon group pin, I noted that somebody named Fumio Osano had, had talked at the conference about the new anime coming out. Well, he's also known as Osabu, or Osapi, and he was actually Naoko's editor during each printing of the manga. In the old books, he used to leave some of his notes in the back of the books. For whatever reason, they decided to omit this from the Japanese and English reprint of the manga, and it was just discovered... Oh, sorry for the spoiler, we won't get to you guys for a while yet. Anyway, uh, it was just it just came out at Comic-Con that Naoko is actually the one that had asked for the other back-issue manga to be taken out, specifically the one with notes on how she did the series. Why she did this, I don't know. Maybe there's another book on the way. Who can say? But I just wanted to point that out. This is not a Kodansha issue. This is not a Kodansha problem. Please stop hating on them. As I've noted before, if you have the original Tokyo Pop manga, you're missing out on some of the newer art. Uh, this is how the memory of Keen and Dimian and Neil Queen Serenity in Usagi's mind was drawn in the old book. And then over here, in the new books, there's a little more detail. You can see the rest of Neil Queen Serenity's outfit. So it's not like, hey, I'm walking around naked in front of my kid. No, they, they fixed that. Nalco went back and redrew this, so now it's more appropriate. You know, oh, she's here. Put your clothes on. Yay, and that's more appropriate. Another note is that you're going to notice the translation this time is going to be even closer. There are only a few side panels here and there where the Tokyo Pop book is really different for, uh, from the new print. And that's because of a little bit of history involving this book. Uh, let me do another jump cut so I can explain. Okay, um, I should address something here. When Tokyo Pop first started translating the Sailor Moon manga, it was released once a month in a magazine called Mixzine, because at the time they were known as Mix. M-I-X-X. -X. Well, during publication of Sailor Moon, they changed their name. Uh, they went from Mix, then they decided to split off into a separate group known as Chicks Comics, which only did shoujo manga, shoujo meaning girl manga, of course, and then by, I do believe, book number five or six, they were officially Tokyo Pop. Now, when they were doing the first issues of the manga, keep in mind, the Deke version of Sailor Moon was still on the air. The final episodes of Sailor Moon R were just hitting airwaves, and Sailor Moon S wouldn't be dubbed for, uh, for another month or so. By the time these books came out, Sailor Moon S hadn't come to Cartoon Network yet. So what Tokyo Pop did was they took a few liberties. By the time that they realized Sailor Moon S was definitely going to television, and they got a hold of this part of the manga, what they did was they stopped translating the names. If you'll notice, let me show the page again, the first several characters have names more consistent with the Deke version of the anime. For example, Moru is Darian, also known as Darian Shields. His name Endymion was kept, even though the Deke anime had made him Prince Darian and King Darian. Uh, Tokyo Pop chose to make him Endymion. 
Melvin and Molly are renames of Umino and Naru, of course. Motoki was originally in the D-cut Andrew, so for the manga they made him Andy, the arcade guy, and took out his last name of Furuhata. And then for characters that were just coming in, uh, they kept Asanuma because he doesn't appear in the anime until Sailor Moon Stars. The other Sailor Senshi keep their deke names, Amy, Ray, Lita, Mina, which is actually her daughter's name. Spoiler! But then when it came time for uh, Sailor Pluto and the rest of them, they kept their original Japanese names because at the time, they didn't know Deke was not going to do the anime anymore. They had no idea Cloverway had it, so they had no idea what to name these people. Chibiosa is the last character to retain her Deke name, Rini. As for Usagi, they just decided to give her a literal translation of her name, which is Bunny. This way they could retain all of the rabbit and the moon jokes. So, if you have the Tokyo Pop books, the first names are on par with the original. Also, because they didn't know how much of Sailor Moon S was going to make it to airwaves due to the serious nature of the series, they decided to ease up on a lot of the slain and a lot of the sub-edits. So, when you get these books, they will be on par with these. Okay, here we go. I was dreading this part of the video. So, I got the book ahead of a lot of the people I follow on Twitter. And when I got the book, I couldn't help but notice that there was a respelling of three different Sailor Senshi names. And here we go. Haruka Ten O. And by the way, if you want to spell this on your computer, you have to hold down the Alt key and on the keypad, not the regular numbers, but the keypad, put in 0212. And that's how you get this sign. Now, if you've never studied Japanese, or more importantly, if you have been following any Sailor Moon fan page, even Moon Sisters, you're probably wondering, what the hell is this? Well, I have actually some pretty good news. This is actually how the name is supposed to be spelled. Uh, let me explain what happened here. So to make sure, I actually did crack open the Japanese version. And if we zoom in here, uh, her name is spelled Haruka Ten-O. Now you may be wondering, why are there six characters producing one two-syllable name? This is a different form of kanji. What you are looking at is furigana. Now this is a more simplified version of kanji that's slightly easier to read. If you'll notice on the side, there are hiragana writings to remind you how to pronounce the furigana writings. Now there's a reason for that. Furigana is not the same as regular kanji. It's, like I said, easier to write, easier to read, and oftentimes has even more phonetic pronunciations than regular Japanese. Now, if you were to actually look at this the way it's spelled, it should come up ten o. That's how you pronounce it. That's how it was supposed to be spelled. When Sailor Moon was first being translated, first by fans who think they know everything, and then by actual manga translators, they spelled it T-E-N apostrophe O-H. And for years we were told that's how you're supposed to do it. It's even in the anime DVDs. The legal ones, not the Malaysian ones you buy on eBay. However, not everybody got the name right the first time around either. Tokyo Pop, for many of the books, spelled it Tanao. Not only is that a misspelling, it means something entirely different. And I'm going to go to a text screen right now.
That was a lot with names, wasn't it? And they're going to come back up again later in the video, so... Uh, before we go to that, though, let's look at some more of the aesthetic art changes. This is the Tokyo Pop print of the scene where Michiru is calling for her uh, helicopter. Yeah, she's in high school, and she has her own helicopter. So that's how this was originally drawn. And as you can see in the reprint, they take a lot more digital liberties. Here the helicopter is much better drawn. And there's more of a 3D effect in some of these scenes. So if you like 3D, you're going to love this book. Now this is actually something pretty cute here. Keep in mind, Chibiosa cannot reveal to Kenji and Akiko that, well, she's their future granddaughter. So, since they, they're brainwashed anyway, she refer, refers to them as Ikilko Mama and Kenji Papa. And in case you were wondering, that's something that Tokyo Pop also kept in. Okay, now like I said, there was a lot of confusion about the names. Now like I said, when Tokyo Pop started putting the manga out, they didn't know that Sailor Moon S was going to be dubbed, they didn't know who was doing the dubbing, if Deke was still involved, and they especially did not know if any of the original names were going to be kept. So they took the liberty of just not translating them anymore. So, when Chibiosa becomes a Sailor Senshi, they chose Book 8 to finally name her Sailor Chibi Moon, which is her actual Sailor Senshi title. Now, Chibi, of course, is a slang term that usually means kid. It also means small. So keep in mind that she's Sailor Small Moon. And that, too, would have been acceptable, considering the time period. Now, when Cloverway got a hold of the uh, anime, and the episodes came out a year after this book was produced, they named her Sailor Mini Moon. So, when a lot of people saw that the reprint manga was coming out, we all started dreading, because we didn't know. Are you going to be Sailor Little Moon, Sailor Chibi Moon, Sailor Mini Moon? We didn't know what we were going to get. We were even afraid of Kid Moon. Well, I'm happy to announce that Kodansha has kept her name exactly the same, Sailor Chibi Moon. So let that be the end of that discussion. Now, another thing of note, too. A lot of the official merchandise spells Chibiosa as one word. And in parallel Sailor Moon, her name is just one word, Chibiosa. But for the rest of the Kodansha print, at least up through this point, her name still has a hyphen in the middle. Both are correct, so feel free to use whichever you're more comfortable with in the comments. Another thing that has been left completely alone in the reprint is, yes, Haruka is a lesbian. Haruka and Michiru live together, they're a happy lesbian couple, and, oh yeah, did I forget to mention, um, Haruka is a philanderer. Yeah, you're gonna see her kissing Usagi a lot. As for her motives and how is it that she can go from looking exactly like Motoki to a woman in just five seconds, well, you're going to have to wait a little bit, because I'm not going to spoil it in this video, but trust me, you will need book seven, which ironically has her on the cover. In my last manga review, I promised I was going to address um, this character. Now, there's a, a little issue involving her name. When Sailor Moon was brought to North America, the first thing to come out was actually her doll. I think I've shown you in another video. Um, her doll was released as Kaori Knight. That's, well, you see the spelling at the bottom of the screen there. And not much information was given. A lot of people thought this was a typo. When Cloverway got a hold of the anime and produced it in 2000, her name was the same. It was Kaori Knight. And then for scenes where she was not in civilian form, it was Kaori Knight. Now you might be wondering why then they would change it to Kaori Knight. Kaori Knight. Well, that's actually how her name is supposed to be spelled and how it was spelled on a lot of Japanese trading cards. Keep in mind, Japanese R and Japanese L are essentially the same letter. So they're not so there's a, an issue as to what you should and should not say. That's why when the manga came out, a lot of people were concerned if Princess Serenity was going to remain Serenity or become Selenity, because even the trading cards in Japan mixed this up. 
Now, if you want to know how to pronounce her name, you have to watch the first anime. Kaori Naito-kun. Her name was pronounced Kaori Naito-kun. And as you can hear, there's there's no real way to tell if that should be an L or an, an L or an R. Well, it actually should be an L. So her name is Kaori Naito-kun. Now, as for these folks, Oh boy, this is about to get more sticky. Okay, so when The Witches 5 came out, there was a big stink about what their names should be. And again, even the Japanese merchandise consistently get it wrong. And that's the official merchandise, not the bootlegs. So, let's just run down the names as they appear here. These are the correct names. They're in both the Tokyo Pop and in the Kodansha versions. Mimete. Yudia, Lui, Telu, that's a nice camera shot there, and Sipring. And you may be wondering if this is a drawing error. It's not. That's her twin sister. And we're going to learn much more about her in the next book. Now, when Sailor Moon S was coming to the States, there was a big fat problem of what exactly were we going to call these people? Cloverway had one hell of a time with it, and that's unfortunate because they're actually a division of Toy, meaning that they should have had translators on staff that would know how to deal with it. And they just didn't. So for the English version, and unfortunately this carried over with the subtitles as well, Mimette became Mimet, and that's the best one of the group. Udeal, whose name is very easy to find in the anime, became Eugeal, which sounds kind of like a boy's name, like if Eugene throws up. The Louis name was so mangled that in some scenes they just tried to dub it out altogether. She was called Birut, Biruit, Biroi, Birui, Birdie, whoops, that's another character. They tried everything to say her name and they couldn't figure out how to say it. But the Louis is how you're supposed to say it. Telu retained her name in some scenes of the one and only episode she appears in, and then in other scenes they called her Tellum, which is not even close. They couldn't even figure out what to do about the episode card. Then there were these two. Oh, good lord. Now, Sipring, I do believe you're supposed to say her name Sipring. Because that's how it's said in the anime, and she doesn't last long enough for me to think otherwise. As for her twin sister, well, we're just going to have to wait one more book for that story. This is pretty cute. In some of the scenes early on in this, you're going to see Hotaru drawn with the exact same kind of eyes as Jibiosa and Sailor Moon and the rest of them. For some reason, though, the further deep into her story the more her eyes change, and this is actually how her eyes are going to look for the rest of the series. Ooh. Well, I don't think I like the way she was looking at Jibiosa there. Now, for some people who maybe didn't catch up with this part of the story, um, you might be a little bit curious about Hotaru's actions early in this book. Usually, she's a very sweet-tempered, shy little girl, but when she's around Kaori, and that's how her civilian name should be spelled, Kaori. She takes on a whole other personality. She's very spiteful. She's very much, you know, stay the hell away from my family. And you might be wondering, well, where does this nasty attitude come from? It doesn't even sound like Hotaru. Well, let me explain a few things about her. First and foremost, Hotaru is not what she seems. I know she looks a lot older to some of you. You can stop writing the fanfiction now. She's 12. That's why I get really creeped out when I see fan art of her. She is 12 years old. Please get that through your head. Please, I'm begging you. Uh, Hotaru is just a few years removed from a terrible accident, which you're going to read more about in the next book, in which she was killed and brought back, her mother was just plain killed, Kaori was killed and brought back, and her father went insane. And you're going to learn more about that in the next couple of books. Uh, when she was brought back, though, she wasn't just brought back as Hotaru. She already had the sleeping soul of Sailor Saturn inside of her, but you're going to learn in the next couple of books she's also Mistress Nine. And that's a separate entity. Now, 
let's merge three souls of three entirely different people into the body of a 12-year-old whose body is surgically being enhanced straight through puberty. Um, yeah, there are some issues that a Nutter Butter can't fix. This is in the Tokyo Pop version as well, and this is why I really prefer the manga over the anime. If you've been a fan of Moon Sisters for a while, you notice that I do not refer to Usagi and Mamoru's relationship as, oh, these are these folks and here's Jibilisa, like most websites. No, I acknowledge them as her parents. And you might be wondering why. Well, the manga is actually why. They didn't do this so much in the anime, but Usagi and Mamoru treat her as their daughter once they know who she is. They no longer look at her as some bratty, crazy little kid with a shotgun. They look at her as their daughter. And you can really see how well that's drawn here. I mean, here, every parent has had this nightmare. You have to help me with my homework. <clears throat> every time I've ever asked a parent for help, I've gotten this exact reaction. <laughs> and I just think this is so clever and so cute that you see them interacting with her in a more realistic manner, you know, Mamoru has actual expression, things he doesn't usually have in the anime. I hope they retain this for the new one. Now, while the first anime introduces the concept of the Holy Grail to us via a segment involving Professor Tomoe, yeah, that's how you're supposed to say his name, too, Chibiosa actually introduces the concept of the Holy Grail. The bad guys don't actually know about this thing to begin with. Not exactly on their agenda in the manga, I just thought that was interesting, and that's going to play a big role in the next book. In case anybody is curious, in the Tokyo Pop version, they have this habit of taking out a lot of pronouns and adverbs to make it, again, a little more slainy. So here, Mamoru tells Isagi, you know, it's okay, you can stay the night. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the Kodansha print, it's like, you too can stay over. Mm-hmm. Well, you might be wondering, well, doesn't that kind of break up the romantic mood? No. In case you're wondering, Mamoru has another room in the apartment. That's where Little Squirt is staying. Where's Mom going to sleep? Hee 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 hee. The English books bring back the translation notes, and you're going to need these to figure out some of the newer characters brought about in book number six. And then we get a preview of Sailor Moon number seven. And I really get the impression that there's a reason why everybody kind of gets, gives up on Motoki after a while. I mean, it's it's not because of Reika, who I, I've never been a fan of. I, I don't actually like her. You know, and if you, if you get this, he is warned repeatedly. She warns him in this panel. Hmm, the two of them found something unusual around Sankakasu. And they're investigating the environment. Reika-san, let's go eat at Sankakas. There's a, there are fashionable buildings and restaurants all over. Now this is what Reika is looking at. Reika-san? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, say, why don't we go someplace else? Why is that? I mean, look, those weird black, black cow, uh, clouds hanging over Sankakas. It's a little scary for me. Ha ha, Reika, you're such a fraidy cat. That's kind of cute. No, you dits. That's not cute at all. Those clouds look like the monsters that keep coming out of everybody's clothes. That's not cute at all. Go eat somewhere else. Eat at McDonald's for crying out loud. It's because of this sheer, sheer stupidity of him walking right into danger that leads me to believe that even this girl eventually just gives up on him. Now, I recently got a question in my email box. Which comics should you buy first? Should you go for these because they're older, or these because they're newer? I say that if you're a brand new Sailor Moon collector, start with this one because you are getting a complete translation, no slang added, completely literal script. And then, if you still have some money left over, then migrate over to the other books. These books are still pretty hard to find, and the prices are starting to go up because there's less of them. Keep in mind, these stopped being made in 2005. With these, they're still in print, and there's going to be another printing very soon of this one. 
So, so I have some links at the bottom of the video. Please check them out and let me know if you get your books.